Hello everyone, my name is Colorful Artie and welcome to this video where I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to make uh, and run levels that are you, uh, in Maze Madness that use the secret level editor used by the actual game designers. So whether you come here from my Let's Play of Maze Madness or if you're just curious and this is the first video you stumbled upon, I would like to welcome you and I hope I can do a good job of showing you exactly what you need to do in order to get this to work. So there, you're going to need a couple of things before you can actually do this. First off, you are going to need a physical copy of Freddy Fish and Woofers Maze Madness. I have the CD version in my CD drive right now. So this is not going to work on the Steam version. It's also not going to work on ScumVM. You need to have an operating system running that can actually run it naturally. So right now I have Windows XP running on my Oracle Virtual Box. There are lots of tutorials online on how to get this set up. I had to consult quite a few of them before I could get it running, but Unfortunately, I don't have the time or the patience to give a tutorial of my own on how to get this running. But there's lots of online resources to do, and that's fine. And the other thing we're going to need before we can get started is we're going to need a hex editor of some kind. So I've chosen Hex Editor Neo. It is completely free to download, and it's a very good hex editor. If you don't have, if you have no clue what the heck a hex editor even is, don't worry. You literally don't need to know anything about it. All you need is you need one installed, and I've, I'll post a. Uh, Link in the description on of just where to download this. It's really simple to install and really simple to use. And if you have VirtualBox running like I do, you can just use a shared folder tutorial on how to actually share this download from your native operating system to Windows XP. Again, I'll post a link in the description on a tut great tutorial that I used on how to do that really easily. So again, if you have no idea what the heck a hex editor is, don't worry. All you need to know is it's just a way of modifying basically files on a byte level. If you still have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. The only thing we're doing in the hex editor is copying and pasting. That's it. So you're set, even if you have no clue what you're doing. So first thing you want to do is I'm going to go to my start menu uh, right here, and I'm going to go to my computer. So it says here, devices with removable storage, so there's VirtualBox guest editions, and then there's this, which is Maze. This is what I have in my disk drive. So we're going to go here, and we're going to go to Explore. And so this is pulling up the CD drive with all of the Maze Madness files. So what you want to do is you want to copy all of these. So I'm doing a Shift-click to select all of these. Then you're going to want to right-click and hit Copy. Then you can close that window. That's just fine. And you can close this one. What you want to do is you want to make a separate file somewhere on your computer. I just have it on my desktop titled Maze. This is where you're going to store all of the Maze files. So if you want, so you're going to basically, here I'll show you. You can just right click and hit New Folder. So you can have a new folder here. And if you open it up, then you're going to hit Paste, or you can also use a Control V for Paste. I have already done this, and it does take a bit of time to actually uh, paste all the files from the disk onto the new folder. So I'm not going to show it off, but that's how I got this folder maze right there. So I'm just going to delete the new folder we made for no reason. So once you're in here, so you absolutely need to copy all of the files from the CD into a separate folder, because we're going to be modifying this, um, where is it? I mean, we're going to be modifying this file here, which is maze, and it's a .he8 file. So maze.he8, this is the one we're going to edit. What this is, is this is a file that basically contains information on every single level in the game. In order to actually run the levels in from the secret level editor, we're going to have to actually replace the data that makes the real levels in the game. So first thing you want to do is I like to copy this. So I hit control C, I'm going to minimize the window, and then I'm going to paste it on here. So I'm making a copy of the actual game's files. And again, I have a separate copy on the CD. But here's the thing, because we're editing a file that comes on the CD, we don't actually want to edit it from the CD. We want the CD to have all of the main source files, and we don't want to even touch it, which is why we copy all of the files. So just in case, I do have a backup on the CD, and nothing I'm doing is actually modifying the stuff on the CD. It's just modifying copies of the things on the CD. So we've done that, and we've got maze here. So we still have in this subdirectory maze the original HE8 file, but we're going to edit that soon. So next what we want to do is we actually want to enter the secret level editor so I can show off how to do that. Before we can do that, I showed off in the last video how to run the secret level editor from ScumVM. You don't need ScumVM to run it. What we have here is we've got this HEINI file. So it's an INI editor. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click that to open it. 
And what we're going to do is we get this window here. We're going to go to Notepad. And this essentially has a list of things on my computer, and then after that, a list of a bunch of stuff that are in the various Humongous Entertainment games. So if you have a lot of Humongous Entertainment games installed, you're going to have to navigate until you see this right here, which is MAZE, all in caps, within these uh, brackets. So once you get down here, basically somewhere in here you want to make a new line, and then you want to type in the following line. RET, which is capital H, then lowercase, I'm sorry, capital R, lowercase h-e-t-t, -T, then a capital c-o-o-l, so ret cool, then equal sign one. We're adding this line, and what this essentially does is this modifies an in-game variable to basically say, there's this value ret cool, what is its value one? And it's basically going to say, okay, the value is one, so we're going to change the game ever so slightly to give you access to different things. So this is kind of like a nice debugger that the game developers used. And really all this does is it does two things. Number one, it lets us act, access the secret level editor from the actual in-game level editor. And second of all, if we push exit within the game, it's going to take us to the credits. So we're going to hit Control s to save. Close that out. And now we're going to run Maze. So this brings us to the Maze main menu, and it looks all exactly the same. If we press quit... As you can see, instead of quitting, it's bringing us to the credits. And that's thanks to the ret cool equals one variable. But the real thing we want to do is we're going to go to change custom levels, or you can go to make new custom levels, but I already have this, so I'm going to hit OK. And now once you're in the regular level editor, all you need to do is press the E key on your keyboard, and we are in the secret level editor. Excellent. So, unfortunately, you are not allowed to actually run the levels from the secret level editor. If we try to do this, it's going to run the first level in my actual in-game custom levels that I'm editing right now. So that's a bit of a bobber, but from now on I'm going to basically show you how to do it. So don't press go ever. Save and load. This will let us save our level files, which we're going to use to then copy into the HE8 file and then replace the in-game levels, and that's how we're going to run it. You can also load the levels that you make in case you need to make modifications later. We've got upper here. This uh, right here is going to control the foreground objects that you can swim through, so there are things like the buckets, or like seaweeds, starfish that are in the wall for decorations, as well as the entrance to the bonus room is in here. All the others are just decorative objects. So we're gonna, get, we're gonna deal with that later. Here we've got this lower uh, level section. This is dealing with all of the main game objects. So let's just run through these. So this is a horizontal purple sea urchin gate. So if we place this down, it'll basically be a sea urchin gate that we can swim up or down through if we have a sea urchin. This is a vertical purple sea urchin gate, so if we place this down, then that we can swim left or right through the gate, provided we have a purple sea urchin. Then these up here, these are the hinges that we've seen through the game. It might be a bit hard to see, but these are these brown hinges. And the way you uh, know where the hinge is, is the very narrow end of the hinge is going to be the part that's bolted into the wall, and it's essentially going to swing through this narrow part. So the thick part is going to swing across the square. So that'll swing like that. That's going to swing like that. This will swing like that. It's pretty simple to figure out once you've got it down. And then the rest of these are blank. So you can cycle through these and eventually it takes you back to the purple sea urchin gates. If you want to put something down on the level, you just left click on the square and it'll put it there and then you can right click to remove it. And it has a bunch of sets. So this is just the first set of objects. If we hit set, now we've got new objects. So this is a horizontal sea star gate. That's a vertical sea star gate. Horizontal sand dollar gate. Vertical sand dollar gate. Horizontal spiral shell gate. Vertical spiral shell gate. And then that's it for that set. If we go to the next set, we've got the sea stars, which are used to open the sea star gates. The sand dollars used to open the sand dollar gates. Spiral shells used to open the spiral shell gates. This is the magic scepter. If we put this down, this is where the magic scepter is going to appear to open the bonus rooms on the level. So wherever you put this, that's where it's going to actually appear. And then it's going to be controlled by the next few objects. So this is on 60. So this is where you put it, uh, and Freddy Fish swims on this tile. So if we put that there, and then we put this here. This is where the scepter is going to appear, but it won't appear until we swim on here. So if we swim on here, the scepter will appear there, and it will remain on screen for 60 seconds. If we swim on here, it's going to make the scepter appear there, and it's going to uh, appear on screen for 30 seconds. And then this last one makes it appear there when we put it on screen, but it only lasts for 15 seconds. 
then this is, if we swim on top of that, it's going to deact despawn the scepter. So that's interesting. So if we were to put, like, three of those there, that means the only way we would be able to reach that scepter once we activate it is to swim from beneath it. So that's how the magic scepter works. And that's it for that set. Next set, these are numbered here, so we've got one, two, three, four, and five. These are the whirlpools, and the number uh, corresponds to which uh, uh, whirlpools are linked up. So we can put a whirlpool there and a whirlpool there. If we swim for this one, we will pop up in this whirlpool, guaranteed. Likewise, if we put two more down, if we swim into this whirlpool, we will pop out of that whirlpool and vice versa, guaranteed. If we have three of one number on screen, that complicates things a bit further. If you swim into this one, we could pop out of either one of those. And that's kind of how it functions in the in-game level editor. So basically, the in-game level editor, when you put a whirlpool down, it's always going to be a value one. So if you put five whirlpools down, you swim into the one, you could pop out of any of the others. So that's how the whirlpools work. So you can actually make them linked up in this. These here are the currents. These are the uh, currents that will push you in one direction, so it makes it tougher to swim against the current, but you swim a lot faster when you're going with the current. Pretty simple, and they're also invisible, so keep that in mind. This is the green kelp gate. So if we put this down, this is the one that opens and closes rather frequently. This is the brown boulder, so the one that can hit multiple people and then just get cracks when it hits a solid surface. That's a yellow sponge. It works the same way it does in the regular level editor. These are the bubble passes. So these are the ones that prevent us from actually changing direction when we're passing through them. So keep that in mind. These are the fish bones. So when you put those down, they have to be destroyed by one of the rocks in the game. These here are the water spouts. So if we put that there and we swim on top of it, it's going to push us downwards and we can't move past that uh, water spout in any way. These are the little bubble traps. If we put it down here and we swim over it, it'll go like open up and put the bubble upwards and it can trap enemies in that bubble. This is the little pebble. So if you put it down, this is the pebble that can only destroy one fishbone and it cracks very easily. That's the red boulder, which explodes when it hits the surface and can blow up everything around it. That's the green sponge, which you have to continually push. It won't actually fall, uh, fly in one direction for more than a single grid square. Then that's the orange sponge that you can't destroy. This is the purple uh, seaweed gate, which opens for a long time and then closes, and it opens uh, and closes fairly frequently. And that, I believe, is, despite what it looks, that is actually the orange uh, kelp seed gate. Er, that's the orange seaweed uh, gate that opens for like a second and then closes uh, for a long time. So that's a full set. If we check out the next set, these are the enemies. So that's the anglerfish, as you can tell. He only swims back and forth. That's the shark. That's the dogfish. That's the little worm that technically counts as an enemy, but you can eat to get extra points. That's the crab. That's the what-a-life squid. And despite what this looks like, this is actually the blowfish. I don't know why it has the crab sprite, but if you put that down, that is actually the blowfish. So that's a little annoying when you're editing levels to remember which ones are the crabs and which ones are the blowfish. Whatever. This here are the entrances to the new rooms. So we've got Cave 1, Cave 2, Cave 3, Cave 4, and Cave 5. So there are only a maximum of five rooms, and then in addition to those five, the bonus room. We'll get into the bonus room a bit later. So we've got five of these, and then there's also these, which are narrower. What these do, essentially, is the wider ones you have to put on the top or the bottom of the screen, and well, you don't have to, but the wider ones you can only swim through vertically, and then the narrow ones you can only swim through horizontally. So if we put this down, we will not be able to swim up or down through it, but if we swim into it from the left or the right, we will get teleported to the next room. Keep in mind, though, there are some rules for whether... Uh, there are rules regarding extra rooms. You can only have, I believe, one door to a new room uh, per room, so you can't uh, you can't have like two different gates to uh, cave two from cave one. You might be able to have a vertical cave two gate and a horizontal cave two gate, but I actually haven't tested that. I probably should have. My bad. We can don't, but no worries. When we make uh, our uh, custom levels, we can actually uh, test that out. Also, if this is room one, we can't have any gates to room one. That screws everything up. 
So that's the, uh, that set. Next set, these are where Freddy Fish is going to start, and we can also indicate which direction she's going to be facing when she starts. And when in doubt, if you don't specify it, she's always going to spawn up here. And then this is where the fins get good. This is the actual rocks we can put for each world. So these are from the Ice Cavern. These are from the Deep Dark Caves. That's from the Coral Reef. And that's from the Seaweed Jungle. The Swimy Caves. Sunken Ship. The Kelp Forest. The Haunted, or the Sunken, the Flooded Mine. These are from the Bonus Room. And then these are from the Sand Cavern. And then finally the Crumbly Cavern. And next up, this is, I believe, the final set. So we've got kelp seeds here, purple sea urchins there. We've got the three different shells. Each one uh, gives you more points than the last. These are the randomly spawning ice creams that give you uh, 50 points. I believe it's a 50% chance wherever they will spawn there. The randomly spawning cotton candy, randomly spawning firecrackers, randomly spawning balloons, randomly spawning birthday cake, randomly spawning presents. That's the bubble bath. That's the actual bubble you can use as a shield. The worm doodle. These are the little guys that pop up in the bonus room, so those are the worms that stay around for the longest. Those are the red guys that stay around for a bit less time. Those are the purple guys, believe it or not, that uh, stay around for a very little time. I'm sorry. I believe those are the purple guys. I believe these are the orange guys that stick around for a bit less. And then those are the ducks that stick around for even less time. You can put these in any room you want, but unless it's the bonus room, they're never going to spawn. So you can put these just in the regular rooms in the level, but they're not going to spawn like they do in the bonus room. It's a bit sad. That's the bag of free pearls. That's the box of five or six pearls. And then that's the huge treasure chest filled with a bunch of pearls. And that's the extra peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. And that's it. That's all of the main pieces. Oh boy. This here is weird. This determines what background you're going to have for the level. And this is ridiculously difficult to figure out. Like, none of these look like any of the backgrounds in the game, so I went ahead and tested them all ahead of time, so this is what I came up with, and this is what I found. So this white right here, with this little uh, red thing at the bottom of the screen, this is the... this is actually a background that was never used in the game. This is like a very, very gentle light blue in the background. It actually looks very pretty. And I thought actually this was used on the ice cavern or the seaweed jungle, but it wasn't. That was a different uh, background I checked. So that's an unused one, but it looks very nice, so I would recommend using it. This is the dark purple background of the flooded mine. That is the green that is used in the slimy caves. This right here is another unused uh, background. This is like a much more dark green than what's used in the slimy caves. It looks a little odd. I can I can see why it wasn't included in the game. So you can, you can mess around with that if you want. This is the dark blue that's used for the deep dark caves and the sand cavern. This gentle clear one is the uh, very blue color that's used for the sunken ship and the coral reef. This one right here with the red bl uh, blots that are on the side of the screen, this is the light, blue back the light blue background that is used for the ice cavern, the crumbling cavern, and the seaweed jungle. That's a duplicate of the unused light blue one. This right here is the wavy background that is used for the kelp forest. And then this right here is another unused background. This is an orange background, which looks really weird. But it's kind of cool. And then that's it. So it's hard to remember these all, but you can always just use this video as a reference. I did test every single one of those, so I know I'm right. All right. Now, last but not least, we're gonna go to the upper level. This is what you should use for the like as the last steps, because this can kind of make the map look a little weird. So first up, we have the bonus room. We put this here. This makes a crack, and I haven't tested it out per se, but I would say don't put more than one of these on a given level. And like I've said, even though the I said this in the main let's play, even though there's only one bonus room for every five levels in the main game, you can make a bonus room in every level for your custom levels. It does not matter. So then we've got here, these are the background pieces for the deep dark caves. And it, what's nice is when you move to these different uh, foreground pieces, it will automatically change to the set that they correspond to. So that's a nice little helpful um, thing you can do. So these here are the uh, more background pieces for this time, the slimy caves, seaweed jungle pieces, coral reef pieces apparently, but I can't see them. Sunken ship pieces, 
And yeah, as you can see, some of the bigger ones can will kind of stay behind a little bit. <laughs> so it can make it look weird, but it doesn't change anything functionally. Uh, kelp forest pieces. More sunken ship pieces. And yeah, fiends are looking kind of bad now. Also, the foreground pieces are where you're going to see fiends like the shells or the fish that are there to actually spray the water. You don't need those. Those are technically just decorative pieces, so you can technically just have water spouts that come out of nowhere, but it looks kind of dumb. <laughs> oh, I love these. Yeah, as you can see, it's kind of leaking into the main level. It doesn't actually functionally change anything about the level. It just is a graphical bug. And it, that's honestly understandable because, well, the developers never intended for the people who played this game to actually get access to this level editor. So yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of pieces here. And as you can see, this is why I said do this last, because it's just messing everything up, isn't it? Also, did not mention, but the bonus room tiles you can use on regular levels. And likewise, you can make bonus rooms of any tile set you want. And we're going to be showing that off. I'm going to be making at least one complete level using these pieces and the, uh, the secret level editor just to show you how it's done. Alright, I've got to almost be back down to the beginning. Yep, alright. So that's everything. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit restart just to restart the level editor and then we can actually make a level. Alright, so we're going to Artie. We're going to edit it. The very first thing you want to do is just hit save when this is blank and uh, we're going to say this is empty room. Because I, it's probably you're like, whoa, why are you doing that? Just trust me, you're going to need an empty room. It's just really nice to have. Alright, so let's make a level, shall we? So let's use a tile set that we no, don't normally have. Let's make... Oh, I know. Let's make a bonus room as uh, the first room. So what I like to do is I like to find a solid piece. So I'm looking for the steel. Yep. I'm going to just surround this with everything. So here's, the th here's one thing you need to do. Uh, technically, you don't need to put terrain on the level. The only piece of terrain you need to have on a level is in the upper left corner, because that's going to tell the game what tile set is this, what music should I play. Because the music that is played on the level is completely determined by the uh, type of terrain that is in the upper left hand corner. So, literally, we could have only a piece of steel here, and it would say, okay, upper left corner, oh, piece of steel, that's from the bonus room tile set, we're going to play the bonus room music. If you don't put any tiles down, then your level won't work. I'll just say that. Alright, we need to pick a background as well. I'm going to pick the weird green colored background just to show it off, honestly. Alright, so we've got that. We've got the steel everywhere. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to... Er, I'm going to carve out the maze first. I like doing that, and then I can get the right pieces uh, later on. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Alright, so now that we've got this going, we can kind of go back and say, alright. Let's start making pipes, shall we? This is how I like to make levels, anyhow. Uh, we got none there, cool. Just using the, like, one piece to kind of lay out the terrain, and then we can just carve in the rest later. So there we go! We've got a nice little maze going on right there. Looks 
very nice. And also when you put down tiles and then change to another tile set, it's going to discolor them. Again, that's purely aesthetic, and it's not going to actually show up on the actual level. Alright, so let's drop some kelp seeds in. Actually, kelp seeds are one thing I almost like coming back for later. Um, yeah, we'll put like a purple sea urchin down there. We'll make some sea urchin gates. Obviously, bonus stuff is people like that a lot. And we'll put a balloon like right there. Everybody likes birthday presents, right? Yeah. People also like worm doodles. I like worm doodles, so I'll put one down there. And I guess that was just proof of concept. I'll put one of those guys in. It's not going to do anything. Alright. So we got those. Oh, we definitely need a bonus room. Uh, I'll put the bonus room right there. <laughs> That's going to be funny. <laughs> and we'll put the scepter in a different room. Uh, we'll do whirlpools in a different room. We'll make a current coming out from there to make it a little trickier to get that. Why not? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. So if we surround that with bubbles, so there's actually going to be no way we can get the worm doodle? Yet. Um, but never fear, I will make it possible. So we're going to put a green sponge right there. So if we push the green sponge to the left, we'll actually be able to get that uh, purple, uh, that worm doodle. Just as proof of concept, I'm pretty sure that that actually is the weird kelp gate. So we're just going to put that there, just as proof of concept. Also as proof of concept, I'm going to put this second crab down right around there. Just to show that that, they, that is in fact a blowfish. And we'll put in a few of these worms. It's first level, it should be reasonably easy. Alright, so this is going to be room one, keep in mind. Freddy Fish is always going to spawn in room one. So we're going to need a cave to room two. And we're going to make a room three as well. So I'm going to make the cave to room three right there. Then we're going to make a horizontal room to cave 2, and I'm going to put it right there. Freddy Fish is going to spawn right there. That looks good. And... One last thing I want to do is I'm going to put in... A spiral shell gate right there. So you're going to need a spiral shell in order to get up to room 3. That's my plan. Alright. Now for the foreground stuff. Also, do not put foreground stuff that belongs to a different tile set into another tile set, and don't mix tile sets, or else it will be graphically weird. That I went the long way around, didn't I? Alright. Also, some things, some of the foreground pieces are going to end up taking up more than one square of space. So that can be a little bit annoying to deal with. So for example, like this right here. It's going to put it like the upper left most part of it in the square that you put it. So I selected it there, even though it's four squares big at least. It, put, it said, all right, upper left most part of it is going to go there. And then it just spread the rest out that way. Just something to keep in mind. Um, rust. <laughs> That's the best foreground object ever. Uh, and we'll put a clock right there. And that looks pretty good for the first room. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save this as level 1-1. So it's going to say level 1. And then the dash 1 means it's room 1. So we're going to hit OK. Also... When you save something, 
it's going to go into overdrive and start putting pieces down wherever you just move the mouse. So if you click once with the mouse left click, it'll stop. And you can also remove foreground pieces by right clicking as well, but you have to be in the foreground selector in order to do that. So likewise, I'm in the foreground selector. I can't delete the kelp seeds. Oh, also, I think I deleted part of the this, so I'm going to re put it down. Yeah. So like, I can't delete the crab because I'm in the foreground selector, whereas if I go back here, I can delete it. But it doesn't matter. So I saved the level. And now, honestly, so now I'm going to hit load and hit empty room. And this will give us just a blank canvas to work on. So that, that's just part of the reason why it's nice to do empty room. So now we're going to do room two. I'm going to show off... Yeah, I'm going to show off another one of the removed backgrounds, the gentle light blue one. What would go well here? I know. We're going to do a seaweed jungle level. So this is going to sh just show you can mix tile sets, a different tile set for each room, but you shouldn't put tile sets in the same. So I'm going to hunt down. Yeah, that's the one I want. Also, it's interesting. So if you don't, you don't have to surround the level with uh, solid terrain, except for this piece right here. But it's weird. If you don't put stuff over the right wall, you'll be able to swim off the right side here. Like all this stuff here technically counts as grids and Freddy Fish can swim for these and then gets blocked here. So I do like putting stuff on the right wall just to make sure that Freddy Fish won't actually be able to go off screen. Alright, so that's good. We'll go a little crazy with the terrain in this room, I think. And walls can be thicker. We don't have to have a like entire room like that. I actually... <laughs> yeah, I really like that the look of that already, actually. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start... Different pieces correspond to different types. So this is what you use for corners and large chunks of terrain like this. That's actually not the corner you, you want here. The corner you want here is actually has like a pixel missing right there. It's weird. I'll, I'll show it off when I actually get there. That looks good. That's also technically incorrect. I'll fix that later. I believe that's also technically incorrect. Oh, we can put it there. Oh, actually, I missed. It needs to go there. You also don't need to delete pieces uh, to put new pieces over it. You can literally just click. This piece right here, even though it looks like it's solid like that, there are holes around, that's for junctions that have single pieces of terrain sticking out in every direction. Likewise, this piece here is for if you've got pieces sticking out in three directions, so we don't have anything to correspond to that. Pieces sticking out in three directions, except the bottom. Alright, yeah, that's the piece we want for the corner there. It looks pretty much exactly the same, but it is slightly different. But we want to keep it uh, from there. It goes there. It goes there. Beautiful. Oh, hang on. How did I miss that? starting to come alive a little bit, isn't it?
Yeah, yeah, I like that. Also, every tile set, I believe, will have a bunch of blanks at the end, but that's not the end of the tile set. There's more tiles afterwards. So right here, there's more than one, like, vertical piece, because there's more than one style of vertical piece. Likewise, there's more than one style of horizontal piece. And more than one style of lower piece like this. So you don't have to go out of your way to do stuff like this, but I, it does make the level look a little bit nicer, which I appreciate. Oh man, <laughs> gonna have to go back and fix that now. That is a bit annoying. One misclick can lead you to a bit of annoyance. That's it for the terrain. Now for the kelp seeds. Actually, no. Alright, so we have a purple sea urchin in the... Well, no, we have a purple sea urchin in the last room, but we can't actually reach it just yet. I'll demonstrate a hint, I suppose. Uh... Put a hinge right there, so it's going to be bolted into the wall, and it will be able to swing back and forth through there, just to show it off. All right. We'll put the spiral shell there because we need to unlock it in the upper room. Uh, the scepter we will put in room three, or actually. Well, we'll see. Uh, okay, no, we're not gonna put the scepter in this room. Uh, we will. I'll demonstrate the whirlpools, I suppose. Put a whirlpool there, and we'll put a whirlpool over here, I suppose. Demonstrated the currents. We'll put a boulder down there. Why not? Oh, water spout we should demonstrate. We'll put one right there. Let's just throw some stuff in. Four reasons. Uh, there should definitely be an anglerfish patrolling the room. I think that would be a good idea. We'll put him right there. Also, keep in mind, level design, don't put enemies right next to entrances to other rooms. That would be a big no-no. And then we'll put this crab guarding the kill seed. Alright, so keep in mind we need a cave to room 1 on that side, because there's a cave to room 2 in room 1 that's on the right side. So that's going to match up great. I'm also going to make a fourth room, and I'm going to put the entrance right there. Yeah, we're making four rooms. You'll see why. And we don't need to put Freddy Fish starting anywhere here. No, that's dumb. That looks dumb anyways. That's better. Yeah, that looks nice. And then likewise... Yeah! I like that. 
Or actually, instead of putting it there, let's put it right there. Er, uh, no. That's supposed to be for, like, a lower... Uh, that doesn't look good, though. Right there? Yeah! Right there. That looks very nice. A giant flower? Um, yeah. We'll put it right there. Sounds good. Sorry, I, I can get a little overboard with the decorations, it seems. It just makes the wall look very nice. We're gonna put a clam right there just to make sure people know that there's guys spinning there. Also, just as a little decoration to make sure Room 4 is known as being special. Two clams kissing it. <laughs> I think that looks nice. Alrighty, um, uh, that's just about done. Let's go back to the sets here. Oh, we need to put some seashells in. Put in a firecracker down there, and a birthday cake right around there. Everybody loves bubble bath. Does love well bubble bath. Um, hmm. Nah. Oh, bag of pearls, sure. I love prizes. What can I say? I love prizes. <laughs> Alright, that should do it. And again, I know it looks bad, but again, that's literally just because of the level editor, and it's gonna look great when we actually. So we're going to say this as a level 1-2, because it's room number 2. I'm going to click on the lower part of the screen so that will prevent them from spilling a bunch of stuff over there. going to load empty room again. Okay, so I'm going to break a little bit. I'm going to actually perform room number 4. And that's the orange room. All right, I'm going to make an orange background. And the haunted, uh, the flooded mine should be nice. Eh, uh, well, no, not the flooded mine. No. Let's do the sand cavern. Even though I don't really particularly enjoy it. I want this to be like a really tiny chamber. Like a really tiny chamber. This is like the Temple of the Clams. Lovely. <laughs> Alright, this is where I'm gonna put in the scepter to the bonus room. Alright, so that act <laughs> This is actually gonna be pretty pretty spot on to what I'm looking for, just right off the bat. Yeah, we already basically have. I'm not going to bother with that, I don't think. It seems like a bit of a waste of time. I'm going to declare that good. Alright, no kelp seeds in here. Um... I will put two sea star gates in. How about that? Yeah. Two sea stargates. 
and we'll put a sea star in room three. Ooh, how about we make like anglerfish guardian? No. Put in two squid guardians. All right, cave to room two, and it has to go up and down, so we'll do the wider one. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, we'll put in a worm tool. How about that? All right. The scepter is going to appear down here. You're going to activate the scepter there. But... <laughs> Very easy to deactivate the scepter. <laughs> there we go. I like that. <laughs> Which means there might be something wrong with me. Let's go back to the pebble. Put two pebbles there. I like that. I actually really like that. And I think I'm just going to leave it there, perhaps. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that looks very nice. We'll save this as level 1-4. We haven't made level 1-3 yet, but that's alright. Or not a little empty room. Alright, so last room of the level, besides the bonus level, uh, room. Well, we're gonna make it the last... Actually, we've done all three of the backgrounds. Alright, so I'm gonna make it the dark background, and I'm going to do something interesting for this room. Alright. So start with the terrain, that's always a good idea. I'm going to put the haunted mine, or the flooded mine as the piece up there, but I'm going to put a different number of pieces for the rest of the place. I know I said don't do this, but I want to see if, uh, if it works. So if if uh, unless I'm mistaken, I believe it's gonna look like the sunken ship, except that piece is gonna be discolored. But it's going to play the flooded mine music for the ship, which for me, I think that sounds awesome. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I can get behind that. Now for the tricky part. Pliers! The corner pieces for the sunken ship set are a little tricky to find. Actually, a lot of the sunken ship pieces are a little tricky to determine what they are. That's okay, I love it anyways. I like this a lot.
Cool, I like that. Oh, I don't like the look of that, though. Oh, my. <laughs> Alright, we'll put some kelp seeds in here, because it is the last room and all of that. Make them symmetrical. Uh, we need a sea star somewhere in the room, so we can open up a gate in that other last room. Uh, we'll throw some asymmetry in there just to throw people off in the way. I want a bubble bath in here. How about that? Let's be nice. Alright. Uh, we already have the purple sewage gate. Alright, Sea Star. We're going to put it right over here. So everything's matter. Let's throw it. Throw some sponges. How about? Mm -hmm. Oh, some fish bones too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, actually, here's an idea. Put the sea star there, and you'll have to do a little bit of finagling. Cave to room one, down below. Let's put it down here. Skip from all of that. Nothing in there. All right. We're gonna put the sea star right there. All right. I want to put some anglerfish in this room. I think that would work pretty well. So this is gonna be a bit of risky room, but again, not putting them right next to the entrance. I like the look of that room. Yeah, it looks very nice. Let's throw some cannons in just for fun. How about it? Oh, yeah. Now it looks like a pirate ship. Oh, also, I'm going to try to find the pirate ship flag. The flag that's meant to hide stuff. Maybe I can hide... Oh, there we go. Not what I had in mind. So the pirate ship flag apparently can't hide that. Oh, well. That's fine. And... You have to also delete... Put it right here. Uh, one over. Let's put it right there. And then, uh, let's put it right here. No. Nope. Let's put it right there. There we go. Perfect. Alright. Now we're going to save that as level 1 3. Empty room. Alright, now for the bon Now we're going to make the bonus room. And for this, uh, let's see. I want that. The uh, Let's make it a kelp jungle level. Again, to show that you can make anything. Any room. But we're going to make it simple. We're not going to fuss about the nature of the room all that much. Now, for the bonus room, you do put another starting location for Freddy Fish. You don't put room 2x or anything. You literally just put Freddy will start here when she enters the bonus room. Um, I know. Uh, let's <laughs> let's have a little bit of fun, shall we? <laughs> so, 
I look like, uh... Hang on. <laughs> there! <laughs> it's, a, it's a winky smile. I love it. Also, I believe you can put kelp seeds in the bonus room, which is kind of... <laughs> it's kind of a dumb thing you can do. <laughs> but that's alright. Um, we're gonna put a worm doodle in here, because people like worm doodles for their bonus rooms. I'm gonna put these guys all over the place. I'm gonna put these guys all over the place. Also, if you put in a bunch of these guys and you start hitting a bunch of them in a row, it will stop displaying how many points you get for each guy. It, your score will still count up. Oh my gosh, this is these are way more guys that are normally in a bonus room. I look, I go overboard, okay? I love people too much. <laughs> um, oh, I have a great idea. Battle of the Turtles. You can also put enemies in the bonus room. Oh, hang on. The entrance to the bonus room is... Upwards. Alright, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> I mean, we could be weird and do that, but uh, we don't want to do that now, do we? Oh yeah, and you can put uh, back uh, foreground objects where there's no terrain. That's perfectly allowed. <laughs> this room is amazing. All right, so that's our bonus room, and that's a great one. So now we're gonna say this as level one B for bonus. All right, and that's our levels. So we're gonna quit now. So we're back here, and you can see we got Empty Room, Level 1-1, one, one, Level 1-2, Level 1-4, Level 1-3, and Level 1-B, all in this folder where we ran Maze Madness from, because you want to run Maze Madness from the actual backup file that you uh, created. So now that we've got those, you're probably wondering, all right, so we've got our level, how do we run it? First up, this is where our hex editor is going to come in handy. So after you've installed the hex editor on your... Uh, Windows XP or whatever operating system you're using to run this. Uh, what you do is you go to the maze, make sure it's the HD8 file. We're going to right-click it and hit Edit with HD Hex Editor Neo. That's the hex editor that I have. So it's going to boot this up, and you can see here, this looks really intimidating. There's a lot of weird numbers and letters, and what the heck even is this? You don't have to worry about that. This, essentially, each of these numbers corresponds to a piece of data associated with one of the levels, and they're all stacked in order. So level 1 is first, then level 2, then level 3, then level 4, all the way up to level 50. First thing you want to do, if you're running custom levels, and keep in mind, you need to make sure you have a backup of all this. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. We're going to hold shift and click the first entry that does not have any data in it. So that's there. That's going to select everything before that. So we've selected all the data. And now we're going to hit delete. So we just deleted all of the level data from Maze Madness. And again, this is why I said make a backup of the HG8 file and make sure you don't uh, overwrite any of the CDs files. So we've done that. Now what do we want to do? So now what we want to do is we want to load in our level data in here. So we're going to start with level 1.1. We're going to hit edit with HD, HD hex editor Neo. And level 1.1 also has a bunch of symbols, but it's way, way shorter. This is essentially all of the data needed for the first room of the level that we made. And you need to stack... Basically what we're going to do is we're going to edit each of these levels. So we're going to do level 1.1, one, one, level 1.2, one, level 1.3, one, level 1.4. One, so these are the four rooms we made, and we also need a bonus room. Here's how the game essentially reads the data. So essentially, the game will read the data, say, all right, starting with level one, we're going to get the room, data for the room one, data for room two, data for room three, data for room four, data for room five, and then data from the bonus room. We don't have a room five, but it's still going to check for room five data, and that's the main reason why I said make this empty room, because essentially empty room is our room five. It has nothing in it. It's literally just a bunch of zeros. So it's basically saying, this is empty, and it's gonna, the game's going to read, okay, no room 5, cool. And provided there's no entrance to a room 5, that's going to work out just fine. And then after that, we're going to do our bonus room. 
So in order, we're going to start with level one. Again, we're going to select all of this by shift clicking the first data entry that doesn't have any actual data in it. We're going to copy all of this by doing control C. You can also alternately hit copy by doing that. Going back here, then we're selecting the very first element in this uh, spreadsheet here, and then we're going to paste. And it's, you see all of this data number is red. That means that's stuff we have overwriting, essentially. So this is new data we haven't saved yet. So that's all of the data we have for level one. Now it's going to say, all right, we need data for level two. So we go here, do the same thing, shift click, copy, and then paste. Now level three, again, we're going to shift click, copy, and paste. Level four, same thing, shift click, copy, and paste. So you don't even need to understand what the hex editor is or what it's doing. All you need to know is basically cut the stuff out, copy and paste everything in. And now it's going to check for room five data. We don't have a room five, so we're going to take this empty room data, copy it, paste it. And now finally, it's going to check for a bonus room. If you don't put a bonus room in the level, do the same thing as what we did for room five, empty room, copy and paste. But it still wants to check for that data. So at this point, we have just pasted all of our first level that we created data into the HE8 file. So this means when we save it, if we go to the main game and hit play level one, it's going to play the level we just made in the editor. That said, because we deleted all the other level data and we don't have other level data for it, if we try running any other level but level one, we're going to get an error and the game's going to crash. So just heads up for that. And the reason I deleted all the data is because I'm not good enough with the hex editor to know exactly how many entries of data there are in a given level to overwrite exactly the right data. It's just easier for me to, to delete it, essentially. All right, so that's it. We're going to exit out of the hex editor, and now we're going to show off the level we just made. So we're going to open up the maze file and start playing Maze Madness. So, I still have all my old data from my Let's Play. We're going to go all the way back to level one, and provided we did everything right, we're going to hit go and it's going to load our level. Yeah! We better get swimming and collect all those kelp feet. So as you can see, this is our custom level. This is our first room. We spawned exactly there. We got the blowfish, even though it looked like the crab. He does pop up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He actually popped up. Maybe he doesn't re-pop up? No, he does. Okay, I was a liar then. Yeah, you can put them in that room. That would be great. All right. So we've got the kelp there. We've even got the bonus room within the bonus room tiles. Even though the bonus room tile set, we didn't see it in the game, it actually does have other entrances to rooms. It's really cool. That's going to be the kelp scene we leave behind. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, he still gives us all the points. That's amazing. Alright, let's get the... Yeah, worm doodle. We even had the kelp gate that was the one I said it was, even though it looks like the other type. All right, let's go through here. So this is the other really gentle uh, background. This I, was not actually used in the game. I already checked, and it was not used. We've got the hinge in exactly the place I said it would be. These are linked up. Him. Gotta watch out for the crab. So if we enter through here... So the gates overlapping look weird, but those are two separate gates. No, my, my worm doodle! Oh well. We got the spiral shell, and that's what I came here for. <laughs> this is amazing. Also, if people can make their own custom maze madness, I will play it. Sure enough, sunken ship with the evil music. And again, the tiles for the entrance and the upper uh, left look weird. No! Oh no! 
Freddy screwed up. Now we can't beat it. <laughs> oh, I want to show off the bonus room. You better believe I'm showing off that bonus room. <laughs> this is amazing. But yeah, if if you dabble with this and make uh, like a full set of 50 custom levels and send it to me, I would love to play that. That would be amazing. Just please let me know ahead of time if it's going to be like a Kaizo style game where it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to want the junior number, are you? <laughs> Let's try to get back to where we were. That'll be the last kelp seed I get. Did I put a purple sea urchin gate in anywhere? I don't think I did. That's hilarious. <laughs> that was too close, Freddy. Yeah, I put in a purple sea urchin, but there's no purple sea urchin gate. Whoops. I meant to put it into that room, but oh well. <laughs> oh well, that always showed off purple sea urchins, I suppose. Alright, let's go get that scepter, shall we? And it's, it's three points, so I have unlimited lives. So we opened up the gate, even though it doesn't look like we did. It's funny. Okay, we gotta swim close here, because otherwise, that disappears. What a life! What a life! What a life! Oh, we opened up the special room. Let's have so much fun in the bonus room. Yeah, eventually those 100s and, like, the numbers that pop up are gonna stop popping up. Because I put in so many of these guys. That means if you put in the duck in the first room, like I did, you can just keep waiting around and get in and get unlimited points. Oh my gosh, look at all these guys. Oh, this is amazing. At least I think the numbers are going to stop popping up. Maybe I'm... Maybe because I'm running a better computer than the one I used to point this on, that... Love that music, though. Love that joke. Oh, yeah, this is amazing. So limitless possibilities, so <laughs> thanks for watching everybody, I really hope people are, uh, find this uh, tutorial helpful and are inspired to make some custom levels. And like I said before, please let me know if you make a full pack, I would be very happy to play that. <laughs> because I love this game a little too much. Alright, Krabby. I have made myself 10 custom levels for this, uh, 5 in the... I was planning on making an entire pack, but, well, that was one of those projects I ended up abandoning. Mainly when I got to college, and I'm like, wait, I can program my own games. Why would I do this? Oh well. So I made 5 in the sand cavern tile set, and then 5 in the slimy cave tile set. They're, they're, they are, I, I like those, but admittedly, level design needs something to be desired, because I did make a mistake of putting too many enemies in, and it's ridiculously hard. So, I hope everybody enjoyed this tutorial on how to make your own custom levels in Maze Madness using the full-on level editor. 
And I hope you found it informative. So thank you very much for watching again. And if you like what you saw, then if... <laughs> also, if I should mention, if this is just a one-off video you randomly came across, you should check out my Maze Madness Let's Play. I did that. And also, yeah, if you like my videos, then subscribe if you want to be alerted when I make new videos. Or don't. I don't, I don't make money off of these. I do these just for fun. But I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end. So, until we meet again, I look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a great day, and God bless.